Chapter 26 Nick Hello everyone. I write before you read the chapter because since there were problems with the previous one, that there were people who had not been able to read it in its entirety, a warning that. Make sure you read it. The chapter not only tells of Noah's meeting with Jenna. Yeah. You want to make sure, I already said that on my Instagram I upload phrases from each chapter and the one from. The last one is almost at the end so if the phrase sounds familiar to you, it means you read the entire chapter, winky face. I hope you have been helpful. I could not sleep. After the fight with Noah that had ended me between. His legs, I managed to make my anger dissipate. I knew I was right, I knew there was. Been quite the dick since I arrived but it pissed me off knowing that Jenna had. Managed to plant those doubts in his head. I didn't want him to doubt me, damn he tried, but there he was challenging me. As usual. I watched him sleep, he literally looked like a doll. He had his red lips parted and after having given the subject more thought. What she had surely planned, she looked relaxed and fast asleep. Some of her hair stuck to her temples and I carefully brushed them away. Smiling as her eyes furrowed while still asleep. It was quite hot, and she was still without. Understand how Noah needed to have a blanket over her body, no matter what. That it was more than 30 degrees on the street. I got out of bed and turned on the air conditioning. I needed to do something, move, clear my mind. My sister would arrive within. Two days and there were many things left to do. I went to the room that would soon be his and felt warmth inside knowing that he was going. To be able to protect her and love her for a few days, even if they were just a few, I didn't care. That's better than nothing. My mother came to my mind and again I asked myself why. Hell he had wanted to talk to me. That woman was completely crazy, she always did. I suspected, sometimes when she heard her arguing with my father the whole house seemed to fall. To shake and it was a big house. There were many boxes in that room, and I set out to take them all out. The most of them were clothes or basketball and surfing trophies that he had been collecting since. That she was 11 years old. At first I remember that just by seeing my happy face. Mother, I felt like the best child in the world, then when she left and no one came to. Seeing myself I started doing it for different reasons, most of them because the aunts. A guy who won trophies with amazing ease was very helpful. I took out the boxes, deciding that it would be better to throw them all away. When there were only the treadmill and my weight machine I decided to start exercising. Needed. Discharge the pent-up energy that seemed to gush from all my veins, I couldn't use. Noah whenever he needed comfort or mental release. With pajama pants. I leaned back on the machine and started counting, 1, 2, 3, 100, 180, 181. What are you doing? Noah's shout brought me out of my reverie. With accelerated breathing and totally soaked, I sat up to see her. I was beautiful, with my shirt. Wearing, and those lace panties that I liked so much. Hello, freckles, I answered in good humor, without understanding why she was watching me. Horrified. She approached me and punched me on the arm, a punch that was like a caress. Of a pen, it must be said. Have you seen yourself? She said, alarmed and letting go of my arms when I tried to place her. Between my legs. What was wrong with her? Nicholas, seriously, you're an idiot. I looked down as she fixed her eyes on my torso. What the hell? Her entire stomach was full of blood. She had opened the wound that had already been on the verge of healing. I got up and left the room. Noah followed me but I went into the bedroom. Bathroom and locked it. Let me in, she said indignantly on the other side of the door. Not even in your dreams, I'm not going to carry you again after you pass out, he said. 
I yelled as she grabbed a towel, wet it, and rubbed it over my wound. It was not four. So much so that it had only opened a little, but since she was bleeding, damn it. Nicholas. I rolled my eyes. It would be better to get in the shower, it was disgusting. When. I cleaned the blood off of her and made sure that nothing red could affect her, I let her in. Her look was angry, angry and relieved to see that in reality she had not been. For so much. Can you go back to bed? He said a few seconds after we both. We would remain silent. Me ogling her, her deciding whether to give me a. Punching me for being an idiot or kissing me on the mouth, I wasn't sure. I approached her and put a hand on her shoulders, pulled her towards me and kissed her on top. From her head, inhaling her scent. We went together to the bed where, a little calmer after having released. The accumulated tension, I was able to relax next to her. I felt Noah's breath against my chest, I pressed her against me, and with my hand. Right hand I drew circles on her back, the darkness surrounded us only interrupted by the city lights coming through the window. Soon I would have my sister. The next morning the painters woke us up. Noah seemed to be in a trance so that it was my turn to get up to open it to them. He had made them come before 7 because I worked in the office at 8.30. When I showed them the small room, they promised me they would finish in a couple of hours. I didn't like leaving my girlfriend asleep with those guys in my apartment so. So I went to wake her up while the painters were doing her work. Noah, wake up, I said, patting her shoulder. She grunted and continued sleeping. I started to get dressed, looking at the clock. It was next to my nightstand. It was late, I had to leave immediately if I didn't want to. To be late. Noah, I said, raising my voice. Her eyes opened, tired and annoyed. After having called her almost shouting seeing that she did not wake up from it. Do you know what the word vacation means? She let me go, rolling around on the sheets and leaving my head under my pillow. Fuck. I didn't have time for this. I left the room and picked up my cell phone. On the third ring Steve answered me, awake and alert, as always. Mr. Leaster. I rolled my eyes, the day that man got past the formalities, I he would be the king of Rome. I need you to come to my apartment and open it for Noah, I said looking for a key. In one of the dresser drawers. What about his apartment, sir? I found her and went straight to my bedroom. Open the door to my room for her, she is sleeping inside it. I closed it carefully so that she wouldn't notice what she was doing. God would not want it. I was furious but I wasn't going to give the painters a free pass to come in and they could see her sleeping or someone could come up with something clever. Are you going to lock her up, sir? Steve's tone of voice was clearly disapproving. I rolled my eyes, of course. She wasn't locking her in, well yes, but she was asleep and Steve would only take about 45 minutes. Minutes to get here, 45 minutes to where Noah was going to be in his fifth dream. Please do what I told you, I leave the key where you already know, you just have to come. To open it and wait for the painters to leave, can you do it? I have to go to work. A sigh was heard on the other end of the line. I'll be there as soon as possible, Nicholas. I smiled when I heard him say my name. Contrary to what one might assume. When Steve called me Nicholas it was because he was tickling him. Thanks buddy, and, don't tell Noah. That being said, I kept the key where Steve could find it and the painters couldn't, I left too. Hundred bills on the kitchen counter and said goodbye to the workers. Even so, I left with a pang of unease leaving Noah alone in that. Room. I arrived at the office just in time. My office was at the end of the hallway and I left. Straight there without even stopping to have a coffee. Today my father was going to come, I told him. 
He had said in God forbid he saw me arrive late, I only needed that and the next thing. It would be that I started serving coffee to all the staff. What I didn't expect was to find him in my office, speaking. Calmly with the new intern. She was sitting in my chair and she was smiling politely at something my father had just finished. To tell him. When I entered they both turned to me. My confusion turned to anger when I saw a second table, placed on the other side. Side of the room next to the window, my window. Hello, son, my father said with a friendly smile. Okay, I was in a good mood today, what a novelty. What is this? I said, pointing alternately at Sophia and the table in the corner. My father frowned and turned to the intruder. Haven't you told him, my father asked, looking at us both alternately. His son has made it clear that he does not like to share his work, Mr. Leister. Well no, pretty, I don't like it. My father looked at me. Sophia is the daughter of Senator Aiken, Nicholas, she has decided to do her internship here. Because I myself offered him this job. I squinted at the senator's daughter. She hadn't had a clue, I guess. That my father was interested in having a good relationship with his father, although he did not understand that. I was involved in this whole thing. You have been practicing for quite some time, you are about to finish your degree and I have. You told Sophia that you would love to give her a hand, help her fit into this world. Fuck, shit, no. Sophia gave me a dry smile, which I knew was more animosity than anything else. Stuff. Great, the dislike was mutual. My father watched us for a few moments, I guess annoyed by my silence but. Too polite to mention anything about it. Well, Sophia, I hope you are comfortable here and whatever, you already have my phone number or if not just tell Nick. Thank you Mr. Leister, I will keep it in mind, and I really appreciate this. Opportunity, I have always wanted to work for Leister Enterprises, I believe that the sectors which your company has decided to open are crucial when it comes to expanding the business and prosper, knowing the laws well, you can conquer a little of everything, and I am sure that with your son's help, we can achieve something magnificent. And on top of that, he had a ball, although the little speech had gone perfectly well. My father looked at her approvingly and then said goodbye and left, but not before. Give me a warning look. It's obvious that you are the daughter of a politician, I said, looking at her intently. She is sitting on me. Chair, you can move now. Sophia smiled and stood up carefully. My eyes drifted to her outfit. Executive. Pearl grey pencil skirt and pristine white shirt, yes sir, she had everyone in front of her. A daddy's daughter. Don't be fooled by my appearance, Nicholas, I came here to stay. I frowned but decided to ignore her comment. I sat in my chair, opened my email. And I got to work. Two hours later and without exchanging a single word with the uptight lady, my phone. It started to vibrate. He had a message, a message from Noah. If you lock me up again, I'm going to cut off some very valuable parts of your anatomy. Nicholas Leister, yours is already bordering on madness, make yourself look at it. An idiotic smile spread across my face. Crazy about you, baby. I hope I kept the painters at bay. Are you still in it? Floor. How has the room turned out? Thank you for staying and waiting, I love you, Sins. His message did not take long to arrive. The room has been perfect, I hope the smell of paint has disappeared so. Tomorrow. The very nice painters, here they are, with me, having a beer and chatting about trivia, you'd love to that. I picked up the phone and dialed in less than a second. Mr. Leister. Stop the nonsense, are you with Noah? What the hell do painters do with it? Before Steve could answer I heard Noah on the other end of the line. Give me the phone, Steve. 
Nicholas? The same, I said sharply. Across my office Sophia looked at me with raised eyebrows. Can you stop behaving like a stalker? That made me laugh. Stalker me? I'm your boyfriend, I'm allowed to be, now tell me, have the painters left yet? Noah snorted. He could almost see her rolling her eyes. You're crazy, I'm serious, what if something had happened to me? What if they had left and... Nobody opened the door for me? You can't lock me up because you get jealous of even one. Plant! Noah's screams caught Sophia's attention and she looked at me out of the corner of her eye without. Pronounce word I got up and walked to the window. Calm down, I did it to protect you. Protect me? About what? About two guys in their early twenties who make a living painting? Bedrooms? What happens is that you have a serious problem, your jealousy is already bordering on madness and... Your obsession because nothing happens to me is going to end up becoming something dangerous, no. Just for me but for both of us. You're exaggerating, I said through clenched teeth. The only exaggeration here is you, this has been too much, don't do it again, I say it. Seriously, do you understand that you have crossed a line? Anyone who saw it. From outside I would send you to a psychiatrist. Are you saying I'm crazy? I spoke calmly, but I felt myself getting more and more heated with every word I said. Came out of her mouth. I'm saying that you control yourself, that you don't do it again, much less. Involving third parties. I trust Steve more than anyone else. Noah was quiet on the other end of the line. I'm going to hang up, he said simply and just by listening to her I knew that he had screwed up. Noah, come on, I thought you would be sleeping and that you wouldn't even notice, I haven't. Because I don't trust you, who I don't trust is them, or any human being, to be. Exact. My wires get crossed when it comes to you, love, but only because I want you to. Absolutely nothing happens to you. Noah sighed and took a while to speak again. He leaned my back against the glass. He would wait until he knew we were okay. I really, really, sometimes I don't know how to deal with you. I was relieved to notice that he had forgiven me. The same thing I say, freckles. I didn't wait for him to answer and hung up. For some inexplicable reason, his words. They had touched some sensitive point. Didn't he know how to deal with me? I felt a gaze fixed on me. I turned and glared at the repellent lady. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, I answered, returning to my place behind the desk and fixing my eyes on the screen. Of the computer. It doesn't fit with what I've been told about you. They had told him about me, great. And what exactly did they tell you? Her eyes drifted to her nails and she shrugged nonchalantly. That you threw yourself at everything that moved. Who the hell had told him that? That was before, beautiful, now if you don't mind, get to work. The look Sophia gave me lasted a few seconds too long. What was going through that chick's head? Chapter 27 Noah Thank goodness I had only been awake for five minutes before Steve arrived and told me. Open the door to the room. I had begun to panic, and the painters, hearing my screams, had already devised a plan to break down the door. Just then Steve came in, all apologies and feigned calm, apologies that should not have been given to him but to my idiot boyfriend who was jealous and obsessive I think Nicholas was starting to lose it when it came to me and others. Men and I didn't like anything at all. He had made my position clear to him but he didn't want to get into an argument either phone with him and I partly knew that he had only done it to protect me, although our conversation would have ended abruptly. Leaving all that aside, in two days Maddie arrived and her job had to be finished. Her room. Her arrival had made me completely nervous, especially because of having to meet her harpy mother. That night I couldn't stay the night, my mother wanted me at home because she 
She had said that she planned to stay some of the days that Muddy was with Nick. No. She wanted our relationship to become even more strained so that day I behaved like. A good girl and I went home after making sure Madison's room was free of gossip and ready for the furniture to be assembled and placed in its places. Respective places. Nicholas was going to have to supervise everything since he wouldn't see me until that he had not spoken to Annabelle Grayson. The next two days went by quickly, I guess when you want it to happen. On the contrary, the opposite happens when the hours are as long as possible, because the morning that Maddie and her mother arrived so early that I couldn't even mentalize me I was nervous, Nicholas was too, of course for reasons. Different, it was very important that he do his job well, because if something happened to him, her sister, those visits would end as quickly as they had come. Nick was adorable when it came to Maddie, and he had sent me a bunch of photos, wondering if I liked the room, if his sister would like it, if she changed the furniture, if maybe it was better to put the bed under the window and not in the corner, if the comfortable would be enough and if he would like the remote controlled train as much as he had liked. He. I laughed amused on the other end of the line. Nick, he's going to love it, and what interests your sister is seeing you, not her. Her new room. There was silence. I'm very nervous, freckles, I've never spent more than a day with my sister, and if. Does she suddenly start crying because she misses her house? She's a dwarf, and I'm a guy, sometimes I don't. I know how to deal with those things. I smiled at the mirror that was in front of me at that moment. He loved it when he saw him so worried, he was always so sure of himself, so authoritarian and bossy, that when he let his guard down and showed me that underneath, there was something tender and brotherly in that shell, I just wanted to hug him without rest. I will try to be with you most of the time, I answered, sitting on my bed and looking at the wooden beams of the ceiling. As? You're going to be there for four days, right? He asked me suddenly, changing his tone. And getting serious. I bit my tongue. And just then there was a knock on the door. Can we talk for a moment? My mother asked me, entering my room and watching me calmly. I nodded, grateful for the first time that my mother interrupted a conversation with Nick. My mother wants to talk to me, we'll talk tomorrow, okay? I cut it off before regretting it and grabbing my suitcases that were open on the floor next to my bed and go live with my boyfriend. It was better to wait, there were only two left. Weeks, I had to play my cards properly or I wanted my mother to. Repudiated. I left the phone next to me on the mattress and watched her as she began to wander around my room. She seemed distracted and also a little dejected. We didn't have one. Good streak, neither of them. We had barely spoken to each other the last few weeks and things were going to get worse when he found out what I was planning to do. Do you have a long time left to finish packing? I knew my mother was testing the waters. I never fully packed my suitcase until the day before I left, and I had inherited that from her. We didn't understand why people. It took her weeks to pack her clothes and close her suitcase, but I shook my head. Head of her, tried to test the waters a little, and take advantage of her attempt to. Approach to tell him that she was going to stay with Nick now that his sister was coming. To visit him. They're almost there, hey mom. I started to say but she interrupted me. I know you're looking forward to leaving here, Noah, she said, grabbing one of my shirts and starting to fold it, distracted, I know that now that you have turned 18 and that you're going to university, you won't want to spend so much time with me here at home. My mother had come to sit next to me on the bed, breath deeply, when I saw how her eyes began to water. Mom, I don't. No, Noah, let me tell you something, I know the last few days have been difficult, I don't. 
We have been getting along well since we returned from Europe, believe me I understand that these. In love and that you want to spend all your time with Nicholas, only I would have. I wish that this, she said, pointing to both of us, had never happened, you and I have always. We have had a good relationship, we always told each other everything, even when you went out with. Dan I grimaced when I heard my ex-boyfriend's name but I let him continue. You came running to my room to tell me how your night had gone and what things. He had told you romantic things, do you remember? I nodded, half smiling, and seeing where I was going. Now that the time is approaching when you have to leave, I just wanted to tell you. That I have tried to give you the best that I could, I really wanted you to. Came to consider this house your home, I always wanted you to live here, surrounded by all. These opportunities, even when you were little, I dreamed of seeing you in this room. With more toys and books than I could have imagined giving you. Mom, I know I was very insufferable when you decided to come here, but now I understand. Because you did it, you don't have to explain anything to me, okay? You have given me the best that. You could, and I know it's difficult for you to see me with Nicholas, but I love him. My mother closed her eyes when she heard me say that and forced a smile. I hope you become a wonderful writer one day, Noah, I know you will. Achieve it and that is why I want you to take advantage of each of the opportunities that the life, study, learn, and enjoy university, because they are going to be the best years of your life. I will, I whispered with a smile although feeling a little guilty for not being able to be completely honest and tell him about Nick. I hugged her and her hand caressed my hair. A few seconds later she stood up. Let's stop with so much sentimentality. She said laughing and I imitated her. I'm going to order some. Pizzas do you want? Sure, I answered as she ran her hands over her dress, ironing some non-existent wrinkles and then she walked out the door, closing it behind her. I fell onto the bed and sighed deeply. Tomorrow would be a pretty interesting day. The next morning I woke up early. I was very nervous and went down to have breakfast. Trying not to think too much about what she was going to do. Maddie would arrive in a few hours, and there was no chance of her mother backing out, she didn't have to either. Tell him many things about Nicholas, and I always had the lie. I repeated myself a thousand times. Time she was doing it for him, she wasn't doing something unforgivable, but one. Part of me, a very hidden and deep one, wanted to meet Annabelle and I wanted to know what. Reasons had led her to abandon her son. I barely ate anything for breakfast, a simple piece of toast, which I left halfway, and a coffee. Milky. Nick had informed me that he would be meeting Maddie at the same time as me. She had arranged to meet his mother, so she had time between now and Nicholas to start dating. Wondering where he had gotten me. He would be distracted taking Maddie and I out to eat. Could put an end to the happy clandestine meeting as soon as possible. I knew that the Hilton restaurant had etiquette and I was also aware of. How Nick's mother spent it. She was another of the many posh and repellent wives of billionaires who liked. Brag about how many horses, horses, and mansions they had spread around the world. For that. Same reason and just with the intention of not attracting attention, I chose a high skirt with. Flight, light blue, and a yellow Chanel crop top that she had been wearing there quite a bit. Time. Jenna had given me some white Mayu Mayu sandals, very pretty and. Very expensive, it must be said, but they looked perfect with the outfit. I think that was one of the few times that I decided to wear a brand from toe to toe. Head, but I didn't want that woman to intimidate me, and as everyone knows, a eh? Well-dressed woman, she is a powerful woman. I looked in the mirror. Yes, she was divine, young and divine and that woman was not going to get. Manipulate me I put my long hair in a high ponytail, and left my room. Luckily my mother had gone out shopping a while ago with one of her friends from the 
neighborhood, because if I had seen myself so dressed up I would have been harassed with questions that I didn't. I wanted to respond. I got in my car and put the Hilton's address into the GPS. Obviously Annabelle had wanted to meet there because it was right next to the airport and... I assumed that it was not in her plans to stay longer than necessary. When I arrived at the Hilton an elegantly dressed man approached me. Convertible. I got out and handed him my keys, praying he wouldn't get any scratches. My sandals clicked on the flagged floor and I climbed the steps that would take me to the revolving door of the hotel. Inside I found a very elegant reception with small armchairs spread appropriately on thin beige rugs and light brown. At the end of the room there were enormous stairs that divided into two others. Just like in my house. I had no idea where I was supposed to go so I approached. To the reception where two young, well-dressed girls smiled at me with kindness. How can I help you? Dash one of them told me and I saw how her eyes looked. With admiration my outfit. I guess she was wondering why a girl who. He must have been the same age as her, he could be right across a table from her, and. Have everything I had. Sometimes I was grateful I wasn't that kind of person, that kind of. Person who cares about clothing brands and money. I had never wanted any of this. She had never even wanted him, she was simple by nature and she would have given him everything she. She was wearing that girl without a second's hesitation. I'm having lunch with Annabelle Grayson. I don't know if she left a note for me. Or something, I said doubtfully. The girl looked at her computer and nodded with a smile. Mrs. Grayson is waiting for you at the Andiamo, if she continues down that hallway, she will turn to the right. She will meet with the doors of her, I hope she enjoys lunch. I smiled gratefully. I walked trying not to falter and just when I got to where the receptionists told me. They indicated, without first being able to see Annabelle, a message came to my phone. I opened it before. To enter. It was a photo of Nicholas with Maddie, they were at McDonald's, and I smiled when I saw that. Maddie was missing both paddles. My god, I didn't even want to imagine what Nicholas must be saying to the poor girl. Little girl. I smiled, sent them a message telling them that I would meet them in a little while and... I turned off my cell phone. When I entered the restaurant I looked around, nervous. The Andiamo was a cozy and quite simple place, but very elegant. Chairs. Milk tea color, white tablecloths on square tables with white cutlery. And maroon napkins. There were some plants decorating the room and the smell of pasta. Freshly made and the fresh pesto flooded my senses. Of course, I divided all this into. A fraction of a second because Annabelle stood up as soon as she saw me arrive. I took a deep breath and went to meet her. She was, as I supposed, elegantly. Dressed in a beige pantsuit and underneath it a pretty white blouse. Vaporous. Some amazing heels, with which I stood out quite a few centimeters. I. She smiled as I approached her and held out my hand before the situation became. Uncomfortable about what the greeting protocol was when you met secretly for lunch. With your boyfriend's mother, who abandoned him ten years ago. Hello, Noah, she said kindly. Mrs. Grayson, I answered politely. She sat down, motioning for me to do the same. Call me Annabelle, she said without taking my eyes off of her. She was analyzing me with x-rays, it was clear. I felt intimidated by her, she gave. Just as she had dressed me in designer clothes, she didn't care that I was the one who had the upper hand. The mango, that woman was terribly beautiful, cold and captivating. Her blue eyes. They stuck into mine, just like her sons did, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Spine of her. I'm glad you accepted my invitation, she said, bringing her glass of wine to her lips. Painted red. Well here the show began. Breath deeply. 
More than an invitation it was a bribe, but oh well, I said smiling when he. The waiter came over to ask me what she wanted to drink. A glass of Pinot Noir, please, very cold, I said, smiling to myself, and thanking Nick for his rich man hobbies. Annabelle nodded, I guess surprised by my answer and also by the calmness and confidence that she was demonstrating with the way I acted. I was not going to falter, not even. Joke. Good choice, she told me, raising an eyebrow. Do you also know what you are going to eat? I smiled fakely and opened the menu. My goodness, a salad there cost more than twenty. Dollars and not to mention the pasta. When the waiter approached us, he looked at me first. I'll have the pasta bolognese, please I love to brag about my pronunciation. In French, although I guess Annabelle was used to that kind of level. Academic. If she remembered correctly, her daughter spoke it almost as well as English. I have a Capri salad, with seasonal lettuce, and please make the mozzarella. Fresh. Shit, I should have ordered a salad, that's where I screwed up. But what am I saying? Was I going to miss one of the best pasta dishes for? Eat shit of lettuce that they probably bought at Alberston like. Any neighbor's son? No, nothing of that. Annabelle looked away from the room, which was practically empty, and then returned to. Look at me. You are a very pretty girl, Noah, although I'm sure you know it, otherwise you were my son. He wouldn't have noticed you, of course. I forced a polite smile, her comment had bothered me, as if my relationship with Nick was just something superficial, and empty, although for that woman he surely. Relationships were based on that, all the money she had invested in looking 30 years old. She clearly demonstrated it. I'm sure we could talk about many trivialities for hours. Grayson, sorry, Annabelle, but we are here for a reason, he brought me here for a reason, and I would like us to get to the point. I said, trying to be as polite as possible, although I it was costing me. My suspicions had not been unfounded, that woman did not. I liked her, I didn't like her and I never would. I wanted to know about Nicholas and here I am, ask me. Annabelle's smile tightened on her face, she seemed to be debating what to say. Continuation, if what she was thinking or some fine and very studded corny, which she probably used it when she found herself in a situation like that. I want to recover the relationship with my son, and you are going to help me, she said without hesitation, going to the point just as I had asked. I'm sorry, but you can't get back something you never had, you abandoned it, I answered and I knew that I was looking at her with hatred with the same hatred that I would always feel. When someone hurt someone she loved, she couldn't hide it. Just then our dishes arrived. The smell of tomato and minced meat filled my senses and also that of the vinaigrette and fresh lettuce. Neither of them made the threat to start eating. How old are you, Noah? She asked me then, taking the napkin and absent-mindedly placing it on her lap. Dash 18. 18, she repeated, savoring the word, smiling in that angelic way. That shape that would look good on a six-year-old girl, not on someone like her eye. I am 44 years old. I have been in this world much longer than you, I have lived. Many more things than you, I have had to face situations, that I would not wish on. Nobody, so before judging me like you are already doing, stop and think that you are just a. Think that surely the worst thing that has happened to you has been that they took you out of your house and. They moved to a mansion in California. You don't know anything about my life, I said with an icy voice. The image of my dead father came to mind, and I felt a stab of pain in my body. His chest. I'm going to tell you something, Noah, she said, looking at her glass, stirring the wine she had. In her with circular and fine movements, everything was elegance. Here where you see me. There was a time when I had nothing, no house, no clothes, 
no food or money. I didn't expect that and to hide my surprise I looked down at my plate of pasta and... I began to twist the fettuccine with the help of an elegant silver spoon. Mother. Nicholas continued speaking as if nothing had happened. I'm not going to lie to you, I grew up surrounded by the best, I didn't even value money, it was something that existed in my life since I came into the world. One day, one like any other. I came from school, I was almost the same age as you, they told me that my father had died in a car accident, imagine, Richard O'Neill, the owner of all those factories, the most envied rich man in all of San Francisco. I thought that that day my life, it would end, she whispered. He had now raised his gaze and was focused on her, whose eyes. They seemed to be seeing a very distant past, a past that perhaps had been buried for years. But I not only lost my father that day, but everything he had. My mother had an even. Been aware, my father had thousands of debts, so many, that not even a lifetime would be enough. To be able to pay them. I watched her with my eyes fixed on her penetrating gaze. He had committed suicide, he said then, the very coward, he committed suicide because he didn't even have the little idea of how to get out of the hole he had gotten himself into. All its properties. They were in my name, all his lands, all his debts. My mother and I were practically left on the street. Until the Leicester family showed up to help us. I listened carefully to what that woman was saying, trying to figure out where she was going. She wanted to get there. Andrew Leister, William's father, had been a friend of my father since childhood. Since we were little, our parents had joked with the idea that Will and I would. We would get married, which he never liked very much, Nicholas believes himself to be very different from his. Father but he is not at all, both were equal, both indomitable, free souls. My mother said when we watched them from a distance, how will you understand anyone? He likes to be told who he is to marry, but I was in love with. He, I loved him always, I loved him. Did they force you to get married? I asked then, especially since Annabelle had gotten married. Remained silent, distracted by her thoughts. Force is a very ugly word, in the end William came to his senses, half of their friends were in love with me, I was a beauty, and although I didn't have a scent, a pretty face always opens thousands of doors. I watched her silently waiting for her to continue. Yes, we got married, we were dating for almost a year, Will's family, it became. Took charge of all my father's debts, and took us both in. William was a man. Quite cold, distant, but he fulfilled his duty as a husband, he treated me with affection. He bought me gifts and when Nicholas was born we were both very excited. I knew that this story was not going to end well, I knew that I was letting go of what was good for. Get to the part where everything went wrong, I knew well that Nick's parents had. Hated, to the point that the neighbors have called the police due to the screams of their fights. Nicholas had told me this one of the few times he talked about his his mother divorces were hard and even more so when there were children involved, but when there are money at stake, and on top of that as much as I knew William had, things. They complicated even more. Annabelle, to my surprise, took a cigarette out of her bag, lit it with infinite. Delicately, and she brought it to her lips. I couldn't help but let that gesture remind me of. Nicholas, and now she put new meaning to her reaction the other day to seeing me wearing a cigarette in the mouth. The years passed, Nicholas grew, he became older and his father even older. Independent. We hardly went out anymore, his trips lasted weeks even months. Then I started to get suspicious. It had been a long time since I had stopped eating. The last thing I had expected was. That woman told me the reason for her divorce, I thought she wanted to know about Nicholas, about her son, but with every word that came out of her mouth he realized that that evening had a completely different end. 
I decided to hire a detective, she said matter-of-factly. At that time, many of those who called themselves my friends were going through the same situation as me, the difference. It's just that I wasn't like them. Do you know what I discovered? Do you know what the photos showed when they brought them to me in an envelope so I could see them? I didn't answer her, I just stared at her. My husband was sleeping with someone, and that someone turned out to be you. Mother. I set my glass down with a thud when he said those words. What had he just said? My eyes searched her gaze and saw in them an infinite hatred, a hatred that clearly. It was also addressed to me. My mother and William met at a boat, she interrupted me, letting out a laugh. Are you really that naive? To believe that they met on a trip and got married on the high seas as if nothing had happened? I shook my head, unable to believe what he was telling me. Do you really believe that a man as important as William Leister was going to? Marrying a stranger on a three-hour cruise, as if he were a teenager. Any. My mother wouldn't lie to me. I said with all the firmness I was able to express. Annabelle laughed and I swear to God I felt like hurting her, a lot of hurt. Well, she did it, she lied to you, just like they lied to me for years, she said and I saw the resentment in her eyes. That lunch had not been to talk about Nicholas, but rather to hurt me, that woman wanted to put a pack of lies in my head. So that? To what end? I don't want you with my son, she finally said. As if it were the most logical thing in the world. You are the daughter of the woman who ruined my marriage, the one who caused me to have to do. Things that I now regret, the reason why I had to leave my son with his. His father and not being able to take him with me. This was ridiculous. You're crazy if you think I'm going to believe anything you've said. I said tried. Control the tremor that threatened to spill over me nothing you've told me. It justifies you abandoning him and nothing you said is true. A devilish smile appeared on her face. When Nicholas finds out about everything his father did to me, when your mother, she, find out what we both did together. All this fantasy that you think you are living, all these riches that have fallen from your honey, they will become nothing, and it all depends on me making a phone call, have it. Present the next time you decide to judge me. You can wear all the brand name rags. Whatever you want, but your mother will always be the cheap whore that my husband used to fuck for no other reason than boredom. I didn't realize she had put me on my feet until the angle of my vision was no longer there. He changed to look at that woman from a more advantageous position. Don't contact me again, I said, trying to control my emotions. Because none of this could be true. My mother and William? Since ever? She also stood up and I swear it scared me to see the flames burning in her eyes. Fire and ice in her eyes dazzling her. She wanted to run away. There are so many things you don't know, silly girl, so many lies that have ruled your life. My son will eventually come to his senses, and when he does he will forgive me for leaving him and you, just like your slutty mother, will return to the hole where you should never have been. Stepped out. I turned my back and left the restaurant, I didn't even stop to think about the threat. Implicit in her last words. I crossed the hotel reception and went outside. She had been a fool, an idiot for meeting me with that woman. Nicholas the first. I had warned him, he had told me about her, how cruel he was to her and how stupid I was. She had let him fool me, and on top of that she had told me all those lies, because she. They were, they were all lies, and I was not going to dedicate a second of my time to them. For me, that meeting had never existed, 